Greetings, friends. This is part two of my speed solving Sudoku tutorial. In part one, I showed you how to do the ordinal solving method going from digits one through nine to quickly get through an easy Sudoku puzzle on Sudoku.com. In part two, what I want to show you is how you can quickly identify uh, where to fill in rows, columns, and blocks where there's only one can remaining. Let's get started. So you can see this is from my previous puzzle. We did about two and a half minutes. I was talking you through it. Uh, I'm going to click on another easy puzzle, and I just want to point out a few things to you first. So what you'll notice is first just use the oral solving method and kind of go through the puzzle and see how quickly you can solve it. Uh, you can see right here, this puzzle is not much I can solve right off the bat. Not a big deal. And just kind of push through the puzzle, but I want to get to a spot where we start to almost fill in the re the uh, blocks and columns because I want to point something out to you. And now you probably notice right here, this is a good example. You notice how this block only has one can remaining, but also this row has one can remaining. I'm going to ask you, what did you notice first? That the block has one can remaining or the row? Chances are you notice that the block has one can remaining. Uh, and these are called the full houses when you have eight out of the nine of a row, column, or block uh, filled in and you only need one more. It's a type of naked single. Your eyes, it's a lot easier just to see within this block. And so you can, if you have a chance to solve versus row versus block, uh, go for the block. So you can look right here and go, oh, yep, this need a one right there. So that's how we'd solve that. If you go for the row, my suggestion is to try to look at the row somewhere around here or here so that you can use your peripheral vision. If you're staring all the way at one end and go all the way to the other end, it takes a little bit more time and then your peripheral can't really see all that. What you may or may not know is that our eyes um, and then our memory can only really store or keep up with about seven digits at one time. So you have nine digits in Sudoku. It's a little bit more we can keep up with. So you have to kind of train your mind to see. But if you kind of look through the middle, then you can actually see to the left and to the right and you know, actually gather more data. But you'll notice that you're you're going to get a little quicker because as like this block is now filled in, I don't have to look at that block anymore. And I can come across here and you see that's how I filled in the, the entire row. But it was easier for me to actually look here at these nines and go, okay, I'm cross acting there's only one spot left for a nine. That was an easy way to solve it. But now I'll go right here at this row and I notice right away I, there was only one spot left. So you can train your eye to kind of as you're looking here, you know, I kind of looked at this part of the block, like look like right around here, and notice, oh, there's only one spot remaining. What's that one digit? Well, you look through real quick, you probably, you might have noticed, all right, it's the one, because maybe your eye, your brain kind of went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and saw that the one was missing from the rest of these rows. So this part two, what I'm uh, trying to get at is you want to start or be able to start solving for these uh, full houses is what they're called. And so that you can train your eye to spot these, and then you can really quickly finish out a block, a row, or a column. So as you get better at this, we're going to, you know, try to solve. And what I'd tell you is the only time you want to deviate, see right here, this is in the uh, block. The only time you want to deviate from the ordinal solving method for speed solving is when you see... A full house. As you can see, I just made a full house here, and now I can solve that three. But I'm not going in here and trying to figure out what these two digits are. I'm just not doing that. But since I know there's a three covering there, there's only and one of those has to be a three. I can solve for the three. Now I'll look in here and go, okay, let's solve the full house. The two is what's what's missing. Um, but I'm not going to go here and go, okay, what are these two digits? I don't know. Like you don't need to worry about naked pairs when you're doing speed solving of easy puzzles. Just stick to the ordinal solving method like I showed you. Like I'm just doing more cross-hatching to get rid of all those twos. And then now if you see a, a full house, well, let's fill in that full house. This is an easy decision point. These are easy to solve. And the Sudoku's done. I'm actually going to start another puzzle to kind of make some more points about how to solve for these full houses. Hopefully... Between watching videos one and two, you're able to practice the ordinal solving method. 
And now we're going to build upon that by looking for these full houses. And that will help solve the puzzle a little bit quicker. So let's start with our ordinal solving method. And whenever I see a full house, I'll fill in that full house. And so as I see a full house, I'll try to fill in those full houses. And hopefully you can spot them with me. If you can start training your mind and your eyes to see the full houses, it will make it a much quicker solving experience. You can see this is kind of a claiming. And you know, it's like right now, there's not any full houses that I can notice. So I'm going along, I'm trying, not only keeping track of solving for the, the digit I'm currently looking for, but I'm also try, starting to notice when I will be filling up the puzzle to the point where I can use a full house. I can't do anything with sixes, let's move on to the sevens. And you see we're starting to get close. You see, this is our first full house that I notice. So it doesn't take much effort to fill in the rest of the full house. But what I want to do is go back to my sevens because that's where I've been solving. And then again, I notice another full house right here. I'm going to solve that. And those, and just get yourself used to looking and being able to solve those full houses. And so that's the second step of this ordinal solving method. And we'll go back, and you'll see the cleanup's going to be pretty easy. But as I see full houses, like here's another full house, it's not that hard for me to solve that. So I can switch my solving method and go to that. Yep, another full house. That's a six. And you can see your eyes will notice right away, hey, there's only one missing. So solve for that one. Sevens are all good. Eights are still missing on the eights. And then the nines. Still missing a little bit on the nines, right? So what are the digits that we're missing out on? Okay. One of them is the one, so let's fill out this full house. And then we also have some missing fives. But you'll probably notice, oh, we have this full house, is that as soon as I switch and do a full house, I actually will go right back to cross hatching because I can probably fill out more by cross hatching. All right, well, we're missing this full house. And the other thing is it's probably whatever number I switched to is a number I may not have cleaned up yet. So we got through that puzzle. I kind of showed you the full houses, so it took a little bit longer. Uh, this is really important to understand is that the full houses, so the naked singles and hidden singles, 70 to 80% of all the cells you saw in any Sudoku puzzle are using those two techniques. So the quicker you get at solving these hidden single cross hatching and naked single full houses, the quicker you'll be at solving any puzzle, whether it's a very difficult diabolical puzzle or an easy uh, Sudoku.com puzzle like you just saw here. So in my third installment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to put this together called the ordinal switch method and that way you'll be very quick at solving these and you'll get it in under two minutes every time in the meantime check out these other videos from my channel practice this method i just showed you don't forget to like comment subscribe to smart hobbies thank you so much for watching